the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning to you all, and welcome on this feast of the Epiphany of our Lord. Welcome to our celebration of this occasion. The Epiphany is part of our Christmas feast, our Christmas season. And in both, both occasions, we welcome Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of humankind. And we pray that the Lord is truly with us this day, and that we are with the Lord as well, as we, with our families, where possible, we try to celebrate together this very important feast, a part of our Christian faith. As we gather for our Mass now this morning, let us pause for a moment, calling to mind our sins and asking the forgiveness that God always has for us. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine out, Jerusalem, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising on you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples. Above you the Lord now rises, and above you his glory appears. The nations come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Lift up your eyes and look around. All are assembling and coming towards you, your sons from far away and daughters being tenderly carried. At this sight you will grow radiant, your heart throbbing and full, since the riches of the sea will flow to you, the wealth of the nations come to you. Camels in throngs will cover you, and dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, everyone in Sheba will come, bringing gold and incense and singing the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be to God. And the response to the responsorial psalm, all nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice, that he may judge your peoples in justice and your poor in right judgment. All the nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. 
In his days justice shall flourish and peace till the moon fails. He shall rule from sea to sea, from the great river to earth's bounds. The kings of Tarshish and the sea coast shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Be- All the shall fall before you, o Lord. For he shall save the poor when they cry, and the needy who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and save the lives of the poor. All the shall fall before you, o Lord. And the second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You have probably heard how I have been entrusted by God with the grace he meant for you, and that is, was by a revelation that I was given the knowledge of the mystery, this mystery that has now been revealed through the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets was unknown to any man in past generations. It means that pagans now share the same inheritance, that they, are, that they are parts of the same body, and that the same promise has been made to them in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Be to God. And the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. We saw his star as it rose, and have come to do the Lord's homage. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Where is the infant king of the Jews, they asked. We saw his star as it rose and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed, and so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, and inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they told him, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, For out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared and sent them on to Bethlehem. Go and find out all about the child, he said. And when you have found him, let me know so that I too may go and do him homage. Having listened to what the king had to say, they set out, and there in front of them was the star they had seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight, and going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling to their knees, they did him homage. Then opening their treasures they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh but they were warned in a dream not to go back to herod and returned to their own country by a different way the gospel of the lord the epiphany is often compared with Christmas, which is on December 25th, and we tend to look upon the Christmas feast as the big feast, so to speak, and the Epiphany as the smaller feast. In fact, they are equal. They are very much the same. Epiphany means the manifestation or the revelation of Jesus as the Messiah. And it points to many different ways and events in which this manifestation took place. 
he was manifested not only as the Messiah, but also as the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Epiphany includes many other aspects as well the adoration of Jesus by the wise men that we heard about there in the gospel. They are often referred to as the Magi, who have come from the East. And it includes other events as well. Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. This was an important moment marking the beginning of Jesus' mission. And it also points to a wedding feast that Jesus went to in a place called Cana. And during that wedding feast, a crisis occurred. There was no wine, but the water was changed miraculously into wine at the wedding feast. So we see there a change, a, tr a dramatic change. And then the gospel, of course, the first fruits of all those who welcomed the good news of salvation. So all of these events are included in the wonderful reality that Christmas and Epiphany share together. For the Epiphany, we often hear it referred to as Little Christmas because perhaps we think that the other feast is big Christmas. The little Christmas, however, is very much the reality of the big Christmas. Epiphany and Christmas are very much linked and connected. And the Epiphany, its importance is shown by the fact that it is celebrated very much with great solemnity in many of our Eastern Christian churches. The folklore that accompanies the Feast of the Epiphany is noted in how we tend to refer to it as Little Christmas, Nolig Bjog in Irish. And of course, it is also referred to as Women's Christmas because the men folk on this particular feast day gave their women folk a rest from all the work they had been doing since Christmas. And so it became Women's Christmas. And we wish all our women folk today a very happy epiphany, a very happy Christmas. So for all of us throughout this difficult, challenging time in which we're trying to cope with viruses and everything else, we turn to the Lord who is revealed to us at this Christmas on this day of epiphany and that we, knowing that he has been revealed to us, he is always with us, supporting us, helping us, and transforming us from the very within, inner part of our being. May we have, indeed, a truly happy epiphany. Lord our God, we pray for all who have been celebrating the season of Christmas. It has come to us as a remarkably consoling event in the difficult times in which we have been living. Help us, Lord, to welcome you, you who are the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Lord, hear us. We pray for all our families, our neighbors, and our friends. Lord, hear us. We pray for healing for all who are sick, whether at home or in hospital, in nursing care centers, and we pray that they will be healed. Lord, hear us. We pray for peace in our world, especially in countries where there is constant trouble and difficulty and trial and tribulation, we ask for the peace that people long for. Lord, hear us. For a moment now, we pray for any particular special intention that we might have wherever we happen to be this morning.
And for all our intentions, we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord our God, be with us in all our undertakings this day, and be pleased to grant whatever we may ask in prayer on this very special Epiphany Day, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us proclaim together our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed sacrificed and received Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and this is my body, which will be offered. Another way, whatever we 
was ended in the chalice. And one of giving is to say, this of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring, and bring her to the fullness of charity. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We have seen his star in the east and have come with gifts to adore the Lord. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you all for joining us this morning for the celebration of this Mass in honour of the Epiphany of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the greetings of this season of Christmas and Epiphany be yours throughout the coming year. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord.